So, uh, yeah. I know it's the dev server weekend and all that, but I'm not going to talk about La Royale until I get my point across. So in lieu of my take on the dev server, I'll give you my take on these economic changes. This is me talking to Gaijin the publisher directly, and because as you can notice, when I talk about War Thunder, I tend to avoid using the term Gaijin when referring to game mechanics and vehicles, because those choices are done by the War Thunder dev team. So I use the term the game, or WT devs, or simply War Thunder. But for pure gameplay decisions like economy and monetization, Gaijin the publisher always has a hand in it. For example, the choice for the SU39 or SU25TM to be a premium for this update is definitely a publisher decision. But let's leave the SU39 for a different video and focus on the greater issue at hand, the economy. Recently, Gaijin published a set of economic changes that appeared to be benign when seen individually, but had far-reaching negative effects when taken as a whole. Most SL rates dropped, most repair costs rose, and even things like crew replenishment costs rose for high-ranked vehicles. The most egregious ones I've noticed was raising the Mirage 3E's repair cost to 21,000 and the F4EJ ADTW's SL rate dropping to 495%, lower than any $70 rank 7 premium. Of course, this was met with backlash in the usual places. Review bombs were dropped, boycotts were discussed, and something about May 26 date that I've never really paid attention to kept surfacing. There were also spams in the WT dev streams, and basically anything and everything to drive the point across. As an aftermath, two posts were released by Gaijin in tandem after the server changes were reverted. We'll take a look at both of them and try to make sense of it. The first one is called Revising the Economy, and it talks about addressing the feedback on the economy changes. They say it's the first step in addressing concerns, and they say it also won't be the last. So at the core of the post is a survey form that asks players simply what they wish to see with regards to the economy, and this time, it's not a questionnaire with a bunch of choices. You're given a text box for your open-ended feedback until May 25. Unlike the 2021 economic changes that took the top off from winners, to give to the losers. Um, if you want a link to the post, I will put it, put both posts links on the description so you can read it. For this one, I believe it's a toss up. It's something you have to wait and see before you judge because it's really easy to post a survey and have everyone answer, but it's another thing to implement the thousands of responses it'll get. Because sometimes the responses contradict each other. Someone will say they want less RP costs for new vehicles, but someone else will say they want more gains instead. Of course, Gaijin won't implement both for obvious reasons, so they have to weigh what's more important to the players. Better gains, or less RP requirements, and whatever outcome is chosen will never please all of the respondents. Personally, I put, playing the game should be profitable for free-to-play players, and paid players should get more on top of that. Premium means you get more, not just enough. Because a free-to-play game at the very start should have a game attached at the end of that free-to-play. With poor gains for those without premium, what they have at the very least is just a glorified demo. You never make enough to actually play the content of the game, so you end up with whatever you already had and just work around that. Then the premium players just get the normal game as it is instead of having an expedited experience. Sure, talismans and premium speed up the RP grind, but the SL grind is still another thing to take care of. Unlike SL, you can't have RP taken away if you play vehicles with a high repair cost. RP gain is always positive no matter how small it is. Meanwhile, negative SL earnings in matches are more than common. Yeah, you get so much less RP compared to SL, but you never lose RP anyway. And don't get me wrong, I'm not asking to never lose SL. I just need to lose less of it. Take my Israel lineup. I have seven vehicles. Two of those crew slots I paid for with gold units. The net total repair cost if I use up all of the vehicles? 54,000 silver lions. Average silver lion gain per match? 30,000 silver lions and that's gross gain. Including repair costs? I end up with negative gains even when I win. 
But if I do really, really well and push myself to the extreme, 32,000 is all I get when I do a really, really hard carry. Did I just respond to this? Top tier should not be profitable. My response is, why not? Why shouldn't I be rewarded with good gains after grinding up an entire tech tree? It's not like players won't play to get won't pay to get to top tier if it's so profitable and less punishing. This is especially true in my case when it comes to naval. I'd be so much more inclined to buy the Helena or the Belfast or the Zhelezhnyakhov if I knew that once I get to battleships, I'm not punished severely with an unreasonable repair cost. Same with jets. Gaijin, there's no reason now for the J7E to have a 20,000 silver line repair cost. Seriously, you can say the PL5B is the best at its BR of 11.0, but what then if it gets up here to even just 11.3 and face Tornado ADV AIM 9Ls and F4S AIM 7s? You can't say top tier isn't meant to be profitable and then go lower SL rates arbitrarily. At the end of the post, they say that they will explain the economics update. So that means while they backtrack now, they still aim to reintroduce it at some point, but with an accompanying explanation and maybe streams as they say. I guess it's really important that this survey explain how awful that economic update was and ensure that it never gets implemented that way. That brings us to their next post. They call it how progression and economy is built into free-to-play games in War Thunder in particular. This post is apparently a detailed explanation by Gaijin creative director Kirill Yudintsev, twin brother of the CEO Anton Yudintsev. We'll take a look at the key points in this post and we'll discuss them thoroughly. The first important point to notice is that they say 80% of War Thunder players have never paid for any of the content in-game while playing for months or years. Obvious Pareto principle reference aside, I don't really have any data to counter or justify that figure, nor has Gaijin offered any. For the purposes of the post, we'll take them at their word and say that 80% have never really paid for anything in the game ever. I assume this includes players that gain their premium content from selling stuff in the marketplace and maxing out the battle pass coupons to get the battle passes for free every time. The next part is a bullet point summary of their philosophy in their free-to-play model. Most of them are aphorisms like vehicles should be unlocked gradually or the grind time should be balanced. One of the few exceptions I'll take is with the statement progression and economy should as far as possible provide a variety of vehicles encountered and that there should not be too many farming vehicles otherwise it's just boring. Doesn't that contradict itself though? If the amount of vehicles you can farm SL with aren't that many, wouldn't it be natural for players to flock to these few vehicles, thus making it boring? Here's an example. Play the 9.7 to 10.7 ARRB battle rating. Count the number of premiums you see as opposed to regular tech tree vehicles. Not a very diverse lot, isn't it? Either you have the MiG 21S, MiG 21 SPS, SU 25, A 10, A 6, F 5. The list goes on. The last part of the bullet point say that with so many vehicles and modes, it's impossible to adjust them manually. Well, that's obvious. The not so obvious part is that it obeys specific rules and manual changes. That one I'm not so sure about. Because if it did obey specific rules, vehicles like the Cheetah Mark III and Mark V wouldn't have a 12k and 10k repair cost while something that's more effective at the same BR like the T62 wouldn't only be 8k. There's also the F86 F2 and Hunter F1 costing 20k and 16k to repair. Yeah, these are legacy repair costs that they had because they were really good before. But now they aren't, so why is it still expensive? That means it's not following these rules and algorithms that Gaijin is claiming that they put in. 
They continue in the post to say that only the economical parameter they can change without significantly messing up the game is changing the time it takes to research the entire tech tree. I get that and I understand. What I don't get is, why do rewards need to be nerfed for this? Don't the RP requirements for top vehicles increase by 10k RP for every new member of the line? The F-16A at the end of the line is already 420k RP. When I started playing this game, the Leopard 1 was 360,000 RP. So in those 7 years, the requirements to research top tier has changed by 60,000 RP or something around 17%. In the SL department, it was around the same. When the Chieftain Mark III was top tier, it cost around 990,000 SL to purchase, which is about the same as the CV9120 now. However, what changed was the aircraft. When the Meteor F Mark III was top tier, it cost 427,000 SL. Now, when you get top tier aircraft, it's 1 million SL at the very least. The final point I'd like to make is that the RP grind is far, far different from the SL grind. The SL grind is such an optimization game, you're basically relegated to following the meta trends just to minimize SL penalties. Here's an example on my end. From January to March, I accumulated around 500 kills in the SU-25K in Air RB just to print money to buy vehicles in the tech tree. I would have loved to play anything else, trust me, but the SU-25K is the most reliable grinder I have ever had. Certainly I could do helicopter PvE, but that requires playing the same match for an hour or two just to optimize your games and in the end I'd get as much if I played the SU-25K for half the time. I'm using the Israeli Premium Apache or the KA-50 to grind and even though the mode accepts boosters. It's still such a chore and the rewards are too minimal. I'd love to play naval, and I do from time to time, but unfortunately, it's naval. And even if the Detroit has a 1200% SL multiplier, it's still a Dysler whether I'll face ships that are far, far, far more powerful than I am. So, this part is my direct address to Gaijin. And if you're still here, thank you. And I'm, I appreciate you sticking this far. Gaijin. There's so many things I can live with when it comes to the game. This game is so good. I've played it for 7 years. I love it. And I'm prepared to live with a lot of the mechanics you don't want to budge on. I can live with the bad maps, the crew locks, the vicar, the SPAA situation for Israel, Japan. The grindy crafting events, the premiums, the up tiers, the constant monetization of so much content. That's a discussion for another day. I just want you to make sure that when I actually play the game, I actually play a game and not what Seth calls a rat race. I want free to play players to profit, and I want paid players to get more from what the free to play players get. I don't want any player punished for a billion reasons that aren't their fault. It's not encouraging to play a match to its end and win through effort and be slapped with a negative 26,000 SL bill. I love this game, and the players that are complaining, being uncivil, spamming, and even review bombing, these are energized fan base that still care about the game and want to see your vision of it being popular. They just don't know how to express the fact that they have never been heard or they've never felt that they're being heard. Personally, I want to see this game improve in so many ways because there's still so much potential this game can offer. And I'd be more than happy to provide feedback and work with the devs to improve it. But for now, let's start making War Thunder an actual game and not a scramble for resources. Throw them a bone, Gaijin, and they will throw one back. Thank you for watching. Godspeed.